ट्वेल्थ बायो बॉटनी चैप्टर फाइव प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर दिस इज अव लेसन इन दिस फर्स्ट पार्ट वी शेल सी द इंट्रोडक्शन बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर एंड फेसिलिटीज नीडेड फॉर प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर कल्चर मीन्स ग्रोइंग प्लांट टिश्यू कल्चर इट इज द ग्रोइंग ऑफ प्लांट टिश्यूज सेल्स ऑर्गन एक्सेट्रा ग्रोइंग प्लांट प्रोटोप्लास्ट सेल्स टिश्यूज ऑर्गन्स अंडर आर्टिफिशियल कंडीशन इज नोन एज टिश्यू कल्चर protoplast cells tissues and organs are grown what is what are protoplast plant cells without cell wall are called protoplast if we remove the cell wall the remaining part of the plant cell is protoplast and what is artificial condition away from the natural or normal environment is called artificial condition that is lab condition it is also known as in vitro growth of plant protoplast cells tissues and organs in vitro means in glass or in test tube why do we grow the plants in glass or test tubes in in vitro method a single x plant can be multiplied into several thousand plants what is x plant the cells are collected from plant tissues and they are introduced into the nutrient medium these cells are called as x plants from the x plant that is few cells we can multiply several thousand plants and this method has several applications tissue culture techniques are often used for commercial production of plants as well as for plant research and other applications lot of commercial applications are there it is used for research purpose haberland was the first to culture plant cells in artificial conditions he cultured cells collected from mesophyll cells what is mesophyll we have learned in the 11th standard it is a tissue in between upper and lower epidermis of leaf he cultured mesophyll cells the cells started dividing he obtained dividing cells the cells proliferate so he is called as father of tissue culture now let us see the basic concepts of tissue culture plant cells have some properties these properties form the basis of plant tissue culture the first one is totipotency tot means total potency capacity plant cells have the genetic potential to give rise to a complete individual plant when cultured in nutrient medium when plant cells are cultured in nutrient medium they develop into a complete plant x plant is collected from plant tissue the x plant is cultured in culture medium here cells start dividing root system shoot system development takes place a complete plant arises this property of individual plant cells to develop into the entire plant is called as totipotency second basic concept is differentiation differentiation is seen in normally growing plants in natural environment you know what is meristem meristem is the young tissue found at the tip of root and shoot meristem is made up of young cells the cells divide actively and produce new cells and the meristem changes 
its structure and function to form permanent tissues like parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, xylem, phloem. The change from meristem to permanent tissue is called as differentiation. The meristematic tissues change their structure and function to form permanent tissues. The cells become specialized in form and function by the process of biochemical and structural changes. This is seen in all the naturally available plants growing in natural environment. D-differentiation this property of plant cell is seen in plant tissue culture. This is a plant, it has storage parenchyma, the cells are removed, that is the explant, the explant is grown in a culture medium. Here, the parenchyma cells, they are permanent cells, tissue cells from permanent tissue, the cells from permanent tissue starts dividing. So new cells are formed. The newly formed cells are meristematic cells. The meristematic cells form a tissue in tissue culture medium called as callus. The callus is a unorganized mass of tissue. It is undifferentiated tissue that is it is meristem. The permanent tissue becomes meristem when it is cultured in a culture medium. The phenomenon of the reversion of mature cells to the meristematic state leading to the formation of callus is called de-differentiation. D, D means reverse. It is a reverse of differentiation. When plant cells are cultured, mature cells are cultured in nutrient medium, they start dividing and form meristem that is called as callus. When the callus is kept in nutrient medium, and some plant hormones like axins and gibberellins are added. We have axins and cytokinins. We have already learned about the plant hormones in 11th standard. When the hormones are added, root system, shoot system development takes place. The callus meristematic tissue changes into parenchyma, sclerenchyma, xylem and phloem and form embryo. The embryo later develops into a plant. The meristematic tissue again undergoes differentiation. Already this callus is formed from meristem, uh, sorry, already the callus is formed from permanent tissue. This is a meristem. This meristem undergoes differentiation for the second time. So it is called as redifferentiation. A differentiated tissue becomes meristem and again it undergoes differentiation to form a plant. So it is called as redifferentiation. The cells of callus have the ability to form the whole plant in a nutrient medium. The phenomenon is called redifferentiation. Plant cells are totipotent. They have totipotency. This is because of dedifferentiation and redifferentiation. What is totipotency? The capacity of the plant cells to grow into the entire plant. This is because of dedifferentiation, redifferentiation. When the plants are cultured in the culture medium, they become meristem. And again, the meristem develops into the whole plant. So, de-differentiation, re-differentiation gives totipotency to the plant cells. The plant part or explant must be selected and isolated from the rest of the plant body. The explant is collected and it is transferred into nutrient medium. Explant is transferred into nutrient medium. And the explant is maintained in controlled conditions. Physical chemical parameters are maintained. Physical environmental conditions are maintained, light intensity is maintained, uh, pressure is maintained and pH and other nutrient are maintained. For that we need laboratory facilities. Washing and drying facilities for glassware are necessary. The glassware need to be washed and dried, so my ovens are used. Medium preparation room is necessary. The room is with autoclave, electronic balance and pH meter. The laminar airflow bench is also necessary to maintain aseptic condition. What is aseptic condition? It is a condition of free from microorganisms. We will introduce the explant into the culture medium. While transferring explant into the culture medium, 
it should be done under aseptic condition otherwise if aseptic condition is not there other microorganism also will enter into the culture medium and grow along with plant tissues so to maintain aseptic condition laminar air flow chamber is used the procedures are done inside the laminar air flow chamber to prevent the entry of other microorganisms this chamber receives air from air filter air filter filters dust particles other bacteria and the filtered air enters into the laminar air flow chamber and we need other culture facilities for the growing plant we have to maintain controlled conditions in the lab so temperature 22 to 28 degrees celsius for the room heaters uh, air conditions are used light intensity has to be maintained in 2400 lux and photo period of 8 to 16 hours 8 hours light and 16 hours dark darkness has to be maintained and the humidity is about 60% if we maintain all these parameters with all the lab facilities we can grow plants by means of plant tissue culture so with us with this idea we will study about the techniques of plant tissue culture in the next video